Baba. Welcome to the finals of the Big Internet Matter. Today we will start on with a hands-on activity. For this, you will need three circular objects like these, a thread, and a rule. So this is how it goes. We are going to measure the length of each of these circular objects by taking a thread. So you take a thread and you pass it around your circular object like this. Now, after you pass it on your circular object, you want to measure the length of your circular object. So I take note of it. Then I put it on my rule to measure the length of, of it. So for this blue circular object, I arrive at a length of 27 centimeters. Then now I want to find the diameter of my circle. The diameter of a circle is just, if you locate the center of your circle, it's just a line through the center of the circle to opposite ends of it. So now I find the diameter of my circle and I record it. For this is eight centimeters. So I take a piece of paper and a pen and I record the length of this circular object and the diameter in two different columns. I do the same for this second object and I do the same for this third object. Then next, what do I do? I find the ratio of the length of these circular objects to the diameter. What do you observe after this? You'd observe that irrespective of the sizes of your circular objects, the ratio is constant. That's what we call the number pi. Imagine being taught about the circumference of a circle using a hands-on activity like this. You wouldn't have to memorize the formula for it, but you remember that, okay, mass is very practical. The title of my page for today is Math Motivation. Math motivation coming from the interesting topics that we see in math, but also a motivation to pursue careers that have a strong mathematics background, which will be rewarded for you. Now let's move on to the area of a circle. We, we, we were able to get that the length or the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So imagine that we, 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 we dismantle the circle into a triangle, like the video you are seeing. Realize that we finding the area of this circle is the same as we finding the area of a triangle. Now, this triangle that we get will have the base, the length of the circle, which is 2 pi r, and will have the height, the radius of the circle. And the area of a, of a triangle is half times the base times the height. So if you compute half times the base of 2 pi r times the height of r, what do you arrive at? Pi r squared. So you see, the area of a circle can also be derived using this practical way. Now, because I'm a lecturer, I'll give you an, an assignment. The next assignment is that, can you find a practical way of finding the area of a rectangle and the area of a triangle? Because we derive this from this, right? But I'll give you a hint. The hint is that you get two triangles to give you a rectangle. So if you're able to derive that for a rectangle, that is enough. So we see that the number pi is constant. Now, if we look at the first 144 digits of the number pi, and we add these digits, we arrive at the number 666, which most scholars call the mark of the beast. So you see, that's one interesting fact about the number pi. But in one of my pictures, I talked about prime numbers. A prime number is a number which you can only write as the, um, the product of one and itself. So for instance, if you look at the first few prime numbers, we have two, three, five seven and eleven they are seen to be random right there seems to be no structure in them but i'm going to tell you one interesting fact about prime numbers now if we take any prime number greater than five and we square them there is a pattern the pattern is that it's divisible by 24 with a remainder of one let's take a perfect example five squared is 25 which you can write as one times 24 plus one the next prime number is 7. 7 we can write squared is 49, which we can write as 2 times 24 plus 1. And the list goes on, as you can see on the screen. In one of the pictures, Katie talked about prime chunks of pi. So we are going back to pi. Now if you write down the digits of pi, first few digits of pi, 3.141592653589793223, and so on. And we put them into chunks of prime numbers. 
Our first chunk of prime number will be three. Our second chunk will be one, four, one, five, nine, and so on. Now let's test this, this theorem or principle there. Now if we square the number one, five, one, five, nine, we arrive at 200 million, 477, 281. And that is divisible by 24 with a remainder of one. How? 14159 squared is the same as 8,253,220 times 24 plus one. So you see, even though prime numbers appear to be random, they aren't actually random. We go to our third interesting fact. Now let's say we want to find a sequence of numbers. Where I give the first two numbers, one and one, you get your next number by adding the, the previous two numbers. So if I add one to one, I get two. If I add one to two, I get three and so on. So our sequence becomes one, one, two, three, five, eight, and so on. This sequence is called a Fibonacci sequence. So if we divide a number by the number preceding it, so one divided by one, two divided by one, three divided by one, and so on, we realize that we are getting to a number 1.6 this number is called the golden ratio let's consider one of the pictures by my fellow finalist Matt when golden rectangles were introduced with this sequence of numbers 1 1 2 3 5 8 we can form golden rectangles like this then with that if the length of one side of your rectangle is a plus b and the width is a then the ratio of a plus b to a is the same as a divided by b and this is what the number we call phi which is the golden ratio so we've seen that fibonacci sequence that we gave has this golden ratio why should we care about golden ratio they actually appear in our body so imagine that you take the length from the top of your head to your soul and you divide it by the length from the top of your head to your navel you actually get the golden ratio 1.6 similarly if we take the length from your nose to the center of your lips to the ratio with your the, the length from the middle of your lips to your chin you also get the golden ratio why should we care about this it's something that cosmetic surgeons use when they are reconstructing your face or even some body parts so for instance when you consider your arm you also have the golden ratio by taking what the length of your arm to this that also gives you the golden ratio in conclusion i would say this You've seen a lot of interesting facts in the big internet matter. Why should we care about them? We should care about them because they are going to help you to find jobs which have mathematics as its background. Not just jobs, but well-paid jobs. So consider jobs like being a research software engineer, a data, a data scientist, a sound engineer, even an accountant. All these involve mathematics. So your love for maths translates into some economic benefits. Vote for me if you found my pitch very interesting. And to end, I would say, Medase, Akwe, Mercy, Asante Sana, Adupe, Nagode, Murakozi, Urakozi, Imbiwale. Thank you.